Hi everyone! In this video, I will introduce Monte Carlo simulations. The idea of Monte Carlo simulations is to use random quantities to provide an estimate of a deterministic quantity. It can be, for example, the probability of a specific outcome. We simulate multiple values of a specific random variable and then we average it to obtain an estimate. It is used in a large number of fields such as finance, engineering, astronomy, climate change, energy, computational biology, and so on. Monte Carlo simulations are very useful in finance when other methods are difficult or impossible to use. It can be used, for example, for the pricing of complex products, the simulation of complex models, sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, risk measurement, stress testing, or risk management. It was pioneered during World War II by Stanislaw Ulam, John von Neumann, and Nicolas Metropolis on their work on nuclear weapons. It was named Monte Carlo because of similarities with simulations of gamble games and their randomness, as a reference to the town Monte Carlo in Monaco, famous for its casino, where Ulam's uncle often gambled his money. Let's have a look at the first simple example with the estimation of the value of pi. We know that the surface of a disk which has a radius of 1 is equal to pi. This disk can be placed into a square which side length is of 2 units, so its surface is 4. So if we randomly select a point in the square, the probability that the point is in the disk is equal to pi divided by 4. So pi is equal to 4 times this probability. So the question is how to estimate this probability. If we consider two independent random variables u1 and u2 uniformly distributed between minus 1 and plus 1, the probability that the sum of the square of the two is below 1 is equal to p. It is nothing else than the mathematic translation of what we said before. The law of large numbers tells us that if we consider the random variable equals to 1 if the sum of the square of u1 and u2 is below 1 and 0 otherwise, and we simulate a large number of times this, the average of the results will turn to the expected value of this random variable, which is equal to p. This is the average of a Bernoulli distribution. So if we simulate the two uniform variables u1 and u2 a large number of times n, and count the number of times the sum of the square value is below 1, we get an estimate of p by dividing this number by the number of simulation n, and we get an estimate of pi by multiplying it by 4. So let's see if it works well. We simulate a random point in the square and we count the number of times it is in the disk. We see above the chart the estimation of pi. We run 10,000 simulation and we see that the estimate is not too bad, but we may need more simulations to have a better one. Here we run 1 million simulations with Python code and we see that we get a better estimation closer to the true value. We will look now at the quality of the estimate. For that, we consider a random variable which is equals to 1 when the sum of the square of the two uniform variables is below 1 and 0 otherwise. It follows a Bernoulli distribution with parameter p. It is equal to 1 with the probability p and 0 with the probability 1 minus p. Its expectation is equal to p, while its variance is equal to p times 1 minus p. With xi such random variable, the sum of xi for i equal 1 to n follows a binomial distribution with parameters n and p. Its average is n times p, while its variance is n times p times 1 minus p. So with pn equal to 1 divided by n times this sum, its expectation is equal to p, while its variance is equal to p times y minus p divided by n. By the central limit theorem, we know that pn minus its expectation divided by the square root of its variance turns to a standard Gaussian distribution when n turns to infinity. So we get this by replacing the expectation and variance of pn in the previous expression. And we see that the error of the estimate is proportional to 1 divided by the square root of n. 
it means that 100 times more simulations are required to improve by a factor 10 the accuracy of the estimate and it highlights that the Monte Carlo method is quite slow to converge. Let's look at it with some Python code. We run 1000 times Monte Carlo simulations to estimate by increasing the number of simulations from 1000 to 1 million and we plot the estimate. We see that it converts slowly to the true value. Another useful application of Monte Carlo simulations is to estimate integrals. If we consider the integral i of a function g from a to b, we could rewrite it as a product of b minus a and the integral on r of g times a function f, which is the density function of the uniform distribution between a and b. So we can rewrite the integral i as b minus a times the expectation of g of u with u following a uniform distribution between a and b. We simulate u a large number of time and we estimate i as b minus a times the average of g u i on the n simulations. It is a non-biased estimator and we know that it converts to the true value i when n turns to infinity by the law of large numbers. Here is an example in Python with the estimation of the integral of the square of x between 2 and 5. We see that we get a good estimation of the true value with 1 million simulations. Monte Carlo integral can be very useful, particularly to estimate multidimensional integrals. Lastly, we will see how to simulate a random variable which follows a certain distribution function. It can be done by simulating a uniform random variable and applying the inverse of the cumulative distribution function of x to this variable. It will follow the same distribution as x. Indeed, we immediately see that it has the same cumulative distribution function as x. And we can test it in Python. Here, we simulate a normally distributed variable applying the inverse of its cumulative distribution to a uniformly distributed variable. After running 1 million simulations, we see, as expected, that the distribution of the simulated numbers is quite similar to the Gaussian distribution. Of course, we could directly simulate a normally distributed variable in Python using the appropriate library and function, but it is not necessarily always the case. Thank you for your time!